I've always enjoyed the landscape. It's always been something I've been interested in ever since I was a kid. I used to go hiking and so forth. And uh, when I went to college, I was an English major, but I was focusing in on landscapes from the standpoint of what the subject matter was. I was a big follower of Henry David Thoreau. I read all of his journals, and he was you know, very much in the nature and the landscape. Uh, so it just kind of naturally evolves that way. And uh, as someone who does a lot of hiking, it's just, it's just natural. It's in my blood. So I would always rather be in the landscape or paint the landscape than do a still life or figure. Well, I really like being out in the landscape in front of my subject. It's just uh, more energizing. There's more going on. There's more to absorb. All the answers are out there in front of your subject. You don't have to search for, quest search for answers to any question you might have. You can always discern that if you've developed the, uh, the ability to see those kinds of subtle things. Uh, but then there's also a place for studio work, too, where out in the field, for example, you're dealing with issues of time. You may have weather issues. You may have people coming and disturbing you and so forth. Whereas in a studio, it's a very controlled environment. Uh, in fact, we've seen that during the course of shooting these videos. You know, we're outside plein air painting one day, and we had to stop occasionally for a passerby or for some noise issue or what have you. Uh, whereas in a studio, we have complete control. We turn off the air conditioner, we shut the door, we put the big red light on, and, um, and life is good. You can have, if you're in your own private studio, you can have your music playing, you can have your coffee on, whatever. But um, being in a studio, there's a certain lack of um, the energy you don't quite get when you're outside. So personally, I always have to work at that a little harder to get the same kind of feeling in the painting. Now, I work primarily in oil and pastel. Uh, I do watercolor for my own pleasure. I don't sell it or teach workshops in it. Uh, but it's kind of relaxing. It's like a, um, a third activity that doesn't depend on the other two. So if I want to relax, I can go out and do watercolor. Totally different technique, different application. Still the landscape, but it's, uh, it's just different. But oil and pastel is really where I spend most of my time. Yeah, oil and pastel, they're, they're two different animals. They're, uh, they're both opaque media, uh, so they tend to cover layers easily. You don't get any transparency or not very much transparency with it. Uh, the thing about oil paint is that you're constantly moving around this liquid medium and pushing it and just getting these nice soft edges happening. And there's also a certain pleasure in color mixing, so you get some interesting things happening with color. With the pastel, it's, it's uh, more immediate in some ways. It's more tactile. There's no brush between you and the pastel or between you and the surface. So you're holding this little thing in your hands and just going right at the painting surface with it. And the color is very immediate. You buy all the colors you need typically, so you may have five or 600 different sticks of pastel to work with. Yeah, the, the approaches between oil and pastel are very similar. I start off with the block in and work my way from these large shapes to small shapes. And I work from uh, hard to soft with the uh, pastel and work from leaner to fatter with the oil. But really, the approach is very much the same. In fact, when I teach the workshops on planar painting, it doesn't really matter what medium you're working in. It could be acrylic, it could be oil, pastel, gouache, or some other medium, except for watercolor, which is a little different. But typically, it's, it's exactly the same um, thing going on. Well, initially, when I start the painting, it's very analytical. I'm using that part of the brain to determine what's lighter, what's darker, what's cooler, what's warmer, what's richer and what's duller and so forth. But once you get the block in established and begin to start pushing things and shifting things and making adjustments, it becomes a little more intuitive. You stop thinking so much and you start just feeling your way through it. And all of a sudden you'll hit these intersections of things where it just feels right and you just kind of move more toward that. It it's attracts you that way. It's like a magnet where the better feels the more you go in that direction and trying to follow it. Eventually you just start feeling the pulse of the painting uh, and that just makes the whole thing come alive and that's a real pleasurable experience.